one of the first things I have to do is take apart this valve so that I can get this rotary switch inside of here. And I can already tell there's a lip inside here where the, where the gate to the valve seats against it. Uh, that's going to have to come out. So I'm going to disassemble this, which is fairly easy. I've already loosened this nut up. And you'll see the whole assembly will come out here. Now, if you loosen up this cap nut, that doesn't do anything for you. Um, that's the only thing that's for is to get to the seal. So take this out. And there's your whole gate valve right there. And that just leaves you with a hollow cavity. So what I need to do is one, I'm going to take this off. It just threads off corkscrew. So there's that. We won't need that anymore. I will need that stem because we're going to be using that stem to attach to the end of the switch so that when you turn the valve, it'll turn that rotary switch and turn it on and off. And this won't go in and out anymore. It's only going to spin, free spin. So now this. You can see this, see this lip right here. That's going to have to come out because this rotary switch won't fit inside that with that in the way. With that out of the way, I should be able to go in and up just like that so that the switch will set in here. So that's what I need to do is shave this out and I think I have a hole saw that's going to fit that. If not, I'll dremel it with my little dremel cutting tool. So let's go to the vise and do that. Took that little collar off that was in the way. And that was just the right size where I still have my pipe threads. So that's fantastic because I would really like to thread that on. Uh, worst comes to worst, I could always epoxy that. I need to take some of this threaded part off. I'm not going to be needing it anyways. And this this cap is just fixed to the stem. And that stem runs all the way down below the threads to the actual switch. So I'm going to take off probably about half of the threaded part and I'm going to take off that stem right below the cap because this plastic stem is going to be epoxied on to the stem coming down from the valve from the knob. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I definitely want to be gentle with that. I don't, want to, I don't want to tear that up. Um, I'm going to use the hacksaw. I'm going to take this cap off first because that's the length that I need it anyways. And then I'll take a portion of this off once I have that out of the way. I'm going to have to hold that because it's going to want to rotate. I just want to cut this threaded portion back far enough to have it out of the way so that when I epoxy that on, I don't accidentally epoxy the threaded portion as well to where it can't turn. That would defeat the purpose.
we go. Okay, so, so far, what I've done is I shaved out this inner ring, which is this ring right here that you can see. I shaved that out on the other side so that my switch can fit in. Okay, now I've taken my switch and I filed just a little bit on the corners just to give it some space to take in and out easier. I've cut the cap off, cut the stem down, and all of that was so that it would fit properly inside the valve. Wiggle it in there, okay. And as you can see, it sits nice and centered, which it's gonna have to be centered or it won't work right. So that's taken care of. What I need to do now is epoxy this switch in here so that it's in a solid state. Okay, so the switch is now epoxied in. And I went ahead and, and slipped in the fittings that go on either side uh, to help keep the epoxy in so it could kind of puddle in the bottom of that fitting um, and create a base for that to set in. But you can see the switch is nice and nice and centered up. Um, the epoxy's all set up so it's in there nice and solid. My switch is turning freely. I don't know if you can hear that or not on the camera, but so anyways, now that that is done, I need to cut this down to the proper length so that it can set on top of the switch when this is screwed in. So what I need to do, that's, that's sitting on the switch right now. So I need to measure the difference between here and here um, so that it can seat properly and that's how much I'll need. that off cleaned it up and now what I need to do is mix some epoxy just a very little bit because all I need is a drop right here now I've got to clean that off too but a drop of epoxy and I'll set it right down on top of the switch screw it into place let it dry and then I can test it see if it's gonna work okay my epoxy's ready so I'm gonna get this back together so that when I assemble this or so that when the epoxy is set up I don't accidentally knock everything loose when I go to assemble this I want this all put together and adjusted back the way it was I don't want to take a chance on breaking that loose after the fact I think what I'm going to do is screw this into place and then take it off and make sure that I don't have excess epoxy running down the sides of the switch where it could mess with the function of it. Alright, perfect. Looks like it was just enough to set it set it in contact so we'll get this in place and let it dry
right after I put the epoxy on and screwed everything back together, it occurred to me if I invert that, it will keep the epoxy from having a chance of running down the switch and gluing the switch in place. So I inverted it in the vise and that should eliminate all chance of the epoxy going down because if it goes down the side of the the switch barrel or the post um, it could glue it to the barrel so anyways I just flipped it over keep that from happening and uh, we'll come back to it here in a few okay well it turned out Should be able to hear that, but anyways, that's <clears throat> my switch is clicking as it turns, so that's telling me it's turning on and off like it should. So uh, that's a success. So now we have a on-off switch that looks like a water valve. <laughs> 